Hey everyone, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be doing a quick review of a brand new indie title that just released called Lightbringer. Now, this game is a 3D platformer with puzzle elements and some light combat. It came out on October 7th of 2021 and had a sales price of $14.99 at the time of launch. It is published by Zordix and has a download size of about 2.9 gigabytes. The question here is does this game live up to its title and shine bright or rather does it fall into darkness? Well today let's answer that. Now just don't forget that if you do like the content please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. So first the storyline. Here you are playing as the Lightbringer, a title you have inherited from your deceased sister. Tasked with saving your land and the world by cleansing the monoliths which have been corrupted by a tar-like substance. You are guided and helped by the very spirit of that deceased sister and almost all the storyline will be delivered by that very spirit which is fully voiced and speaks in verses. The only other source of backstory in the game will come in text form when you hit certain special bells hidden throughout the levels. All in all, for a 3D platformer with an overall collectathon design, this suffices in providing motivation to push through the game and even offers a nice twist at the end. So now, moving on to the gameplay. The main emphasis of this game really is the platforming. However, I hesitate to call it a puzzle platformer because most of the obstacles here are reflex based and only involve light puzzle elements from time to time. The levels have very interesting, almost maze-like designs, and your main objective is to reach the end while collecting as many light motes, crystals, and health pots as possible. Reaching the end will empty the light moat into the monolith, cleansing it and opening up the doorway to the next level. Every 5 levels you will encounter a boss battle, and there is a total of 16 levels added to it the 4 boss fights, and they are all split into 4 different areas. Each area has an overarching theme, such as islands, mountains, and an ice-covered environment. Overall, the game offers a variety of interesting levels that will grow gradually in difficulty, culminating in some pretty serious challenge towards the end. I estimate most will be able to complete this game in about 4-5 to five hours, with completionists going for 100% of the collectibles, easily adding another 2-3 to three hours. Personally, I could have done without the ice covered levels as that mechanic is really overused in platformers and always, at least in my case, causes more frustration than enjoyment. Nonetheless, for a $15 game, although nothing revolutionary, the gameplay loop is solid and satisfying. So now we move on to the controls. Your character is equipped with a simple moveset consisting of a jump and double jump mechanic, a dodge roll to escape enemies and accelerate movement, the ability to run, and finally a boomerang that can be thrown in a couple of different ways. Hitting Y will do a simple throw, while holding down ZL will allow you to aim the boomerang and your throw can actually be charged for more distance using the ZR trigger. Especially the boomerang will be required for light puzzles further on, so I recommend practicing the mechanics early on, as well as it being your main way of dispatching enemies. Your second most important tool will be the camera, which you can control with the right analog stick. You can rotate it to full 360 degrees, however you cannot change the angle. Giving yourself the best viewpoint to approach each platforming section can make all the difference and mostly the inability to change the angle of your camera does not really hinder you too much, but there were a few rare sections where it could have helped. Outside of that, I am very happy to report that the controls are tight and responsive, something that will often make or break a 3D platformer. Now lastly, we have the graphics and sound. Visuals are definitely one of the high points for me with an extremely charming and delightful art style. I couldn't help but being reminded of the graphical style of Blue Fire released earlier this year, although with a much brighter and lighter tone. Performance wise, the frame rate is pretty smooth and steady, coming across only a few rare instances where there were slight dips when a new area would load or there was a lot of action on screen. But these were so few and far between that most will probably go unnoticed and not really affect your overall gameplay. Sound wise, the music here is mostly for ambience and fits in very well with the overall feeling and design of the game. However, it most likely won't be memorable for most 
yet serves its purpose. One thing to note, I did come across one auditory glitch when loading into a new area where the sound would cut in and out. However, exiting and restarting the game fixed that quickly. So now for the verdict. If you're unfamiliar with my grading scale, you can take a quick look in the description of the video. And I will be giving Lightbringer on the Nintendo Switch a 7.5, putting it on the higher end of a good game. Ultimately, Lightbringer has executed all the main elements you need for a 3D platformer very well. Tight controls, good level designs, and appealing visuals. And although I really did enjoy my playthrough, I never really came across anything I hadn't seen before, and was really waiting for that moment that I would get blown away by something that I had never seen before. Unfortunately, that moment never really came. That said, fans of 3D platforming collectathon gaming, this is a solid pickup for $15. For everyone else, I would maybe wait for a tiny sale when its price point hits closer to the $10 mark. So now, let me know what you think. Are you going to be picking up Lightbringer? And don't forget on the way out that if you did like the content, to please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already and hit that notification bell so you know when all my future content comes out. And as usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.